marvelous and magnificent name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and once again welcome to Great Awakenings the television ministry of the St. James Missionary Baptist Church of Rocky Mountain North Carolina I'm Dr. James T. Worthy senior pastor of the St. James Church and I'm certainly delighted to once again have this opportunity to share our television ministry with you a few weeks ago St. James and I had the privilege to take a trip to Charlotte to share with the church where I began my ministry some 23 years ago the Mount Vernon Missionary Baptist Church of Charlotte, North Carolina, as we celebrated with them in their 25th church anniversary. I'd like to take you now into that service as it was previously recorded just a few weeks ago as I'm preaching a message, your assignment has not changed. I pray that you are blessed as we were blessed by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit as we worship the Lord and celebrated 25 years in the life of the Mount Vernon Church. Without any further ado, let's go into that service business now I know somebody looking at me kind of deep uh, and wondering now where in the world is he going with that and it's about three of y'all wondering right quick uh, just what was the assignment uh, for Jesus that has not changed uh, for Mount Vernon I'm glad y'all asked can I tell you what it is the assignment that has not changed uh, for Mount Vernon on this your 25th anniversary is simply this you cannot stop doing the father's business now I would stop right here and just say right quick that there is a difference between the father's business and the folks business where y'all at Rocky Mount I need some help right there there's a difference. There's a difference between the father's business and the folks business. The father's business builds up. The folks business tears down. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The father's business encourages. The folks business discourages. The father's business unites. The folks bit y'all ain't talking to me. The folks business will tear stuff apart. The father's business say it's gotta be God's way. When the folks business say we ain't never done it like this before. This is the assignment. For the church of the living God, we got to do the Father's business. Well, you know what? I began to look at that phrase, the Father's business. I began to work that phrase, and I began to notice as I studied that phrase, Pastor Brown, the Father's business is a phrase in English, but it's one word in Greek. Come on, somebody. That one word in Greek simply stated that the father's business involved being in the father's presence, in the father's house, doing the father's work. I think I'll say that again. Can I break it down for you? The father's business involved being in the father's presence, in the father's house, doing the father's work. That said to me that I got to have the right posture I got to be in the right place and Lord knows I better be in the right position to fulfill the father's assignment but can I tell you something that I notice in this text did you not notice that even Jesus understood that the assignment that was on his life was not his own Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Look right there again. Look right there again. Look right there. He said, I must be about my father's business. In essence, what Jesus was saying here is that I can't do anything unless the father assigns me to do it. And I need to stop right there and tell somebody, until you have received assignment from God and approval from your pastor, don't you move 
and say a word until the release has been given. Didn't you see Jesus didn't have any say over his assignment. He could not determine what his assignment could be and therefore he couldn't even set the conditions of his assignment. I'll prove it right quick if y'all got two minutes. Let me prove it real quick. Does anybody remember in the hour of temptation? when Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane to the point that the Bible says that sweat fell from his brow like drops of blood. You do understand that Jesus wrestled between doing what he wanted to do and what the father said for y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah, you remember it in the hour of temptation. He said, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me there's no way I can die for these folk as mean and as hateful and as honor it y'all ain't saying nothing as some of them are I had no need in me dying for them dying for them is useless I have spent 33 years with them healing sick raising dead and they still don't believe that you sent me oh but I'm so glad I felt a holler right there that in between praying and asking God to let the cup pass from him he went back and found his disciples snoring y'all ain't saying nothing and he said my God if I don't do it this world gonna be in a mess because the folk that I've been left to get ready have gone to sleep on me and if they've gone to sleep on me I can only imagine what they're gonna do to the world so he went back and he said father I'll take the cup. Are y'all ready? Not as my will, but that your will be done. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was what the Father said he had to do. And to God be the glory that after 25 years, somebody in this branch of Zion is still saying it's got to be God's way or no way at all. Somebody in here has understood that it's not what we want. And it's not about how we feel. It's about God being, uh uh-huh. Somebody in here has been bold enough to declare, my life is not my own. To him I belong. And I give myself away. Have I got at least 75 folk in Mount Vernon that'll testify that the man has been so good to me that the least I can do is give him all I got in a worship and a praise. When I think about how he saved me and how he delivered me from myself, picked me up out of the muck my clay and set my feet on a rock to stay, excuse me while I worship and tell you my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his right. Y'all ready to ride with me? I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus. Jesus name y'all ready for it on Christ the solid rock I stand for all of the ground is sinking sand so y'all got about seven minutes as we gather to celebrate 25 years of this branch of Zion. 25 years of reaching, teaching, and preaching. 25 years of a church seeking the lost as Christ commanded. I've come here today all the way from Rocky Mount on my way home to glory to tell somebody with boldness and great power that now is not the time to get beside yourself and get away from the assignment that God gave the church over 2,000 years ago. Now is not the time to start running around like you so smart and you so saved 
and you so educate. Oh, did I say that? I'm sorry. Uh, now is not the time uh, to start thinking that you can do it on your own uh, because somebody needs to know uh, that the same God that brought you the first 25, uh, if you'll trust him, have I got some help here? Uh, if you'll lean on him, uh, if you'll depend on him, uh, if you'll take him at his word, uh, he'll take you 25 more uh, and then you can say through many dangers, uh, toils and snares, uh, I have all, I wish I had some help. Uh, it was grace. So Jesus said, Jesus said to his mother and his father, why were you looking for me? Why were you so sorrowful looking for me? Did you not no, Lord have mercy, that I must be about my father's business. And uh, as I get ready to close, it's important that you understand, Mount Vernon, that the father's business is still the same business that it was 2,000 years ago. The father's business is still the same assignment as it was some 2,000 years ago. What is the assignment? Well, I'm glad you asked because the assignment that is upon the church of the living God is that we must worship. We must work. And God knows we got to witness. Y'all got five minutes? I'm just about done. When I worship, I am at a point that uh, I am aware that God is present. Now, let me tell you real quick because a whole lot of folk get worship and praise confused. Y'all ain't talking. There is a difference between worship and praise. You see, praise honors God for what he has done. I ain't got no help here. When uh, he wakes you up in the morning and closes you in your right mind, uh, you ought to praise him. Uh, when he puts food on your table, uh, and close on your back. You ought to praise him. Uh, when he makes a way out of no way, uh, when he heals your body, uh, you ought to praise him. But now when I talk about worship, uh, I'm basically honoring God, uh, not for what he has done, uh, but when I worship, uh, I'm honoring him for who he is, which simply says if he doesn't do anything else, I still give him glory because he can do it. Can I get a witness in here? Is there anybody in the house that can say, you know, when I look back over my life, I've got to realize that he kept me when I could not keep myself. 
where y'all at Mount Vernon ha, you see I know a little bit ha, was there anybody who remembers ha, the early years in King's funeral home ha, you worshipped him when you didn't have nothing ha, y'all ain't talking to me ha, anybody remember ha, when he blessed you to buy this piece of land ha, that this sanctuary sits on ha, you had no problem worshipping when you built the first phase ha, you had no problem worshiping and now God has blessed you with a beautiful edifice you ought not have a problem worshiping as a matter of fact somebody ought be able to say this is the day that the Lord have made I'll preach even if you don't help me I will rejoice and be glad in it you got to worship but not only must you worship you got to work y'all ain't saying nothing as a matter of fact God deliver me from lazy church folk God deliver me from folk who all they know how to work is their mouths when Jesus said I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day for night cometh when no man can work is there anybody in in here that can say when I look back over my life I gotta put some work in you ought to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor neighbor put your time in because payday is coming after a while can I preach like I feel it there's one more thing that's a part of your assignment you got to worship you got to work but whatever you do don't forget to witness don't you forget to tell somebody just how good God has been to you don't you forget to tell somebody how he picked you up and turned you around don't you forget to tell somebody how Jesus tiptoed through 40 and two generations walk this earth for 30 and three long years healing the sick raising the dead giving sight to the blind turning water into wine don't you forget to witness to the fact that after he did all of that he died God knows he died he died to the sun refused to shine he died to the moon dripped away in blood he died to the earth began to reel and rock like a drunk man don't forget to tell somebody how after he died Joseph of Arimathea laid him in a barred tomb I used to hear daddy say he was a rock laying on a rock surrounded by a rock covered by a rock sealed by a rock but don't forget to tell somebody early oh early early Sunday morning he pulled the sting out of death robbed the grave of the victory cried out to a dying world all power is in my hand is there anybody in here today that can testify I got to be about my father's business I got to tell the world he's the best thing that ever happened to me oh I got to tell somebody he's sweet I know I got to tell somebody he's my joy in time of sorrow I got to tell somebody he's my hope for tomorrow well let me give you your assignment your assignment is found in Psalm 107 verse number 2 let the redeemed of the Lord 
say so whom the Lord has redeemed from the hand of the enemy is there anybody that feel like praising him because he snatched you out of the enemy's hand you were shackled by a heavy burden beneath a load of guilt and shame but then the hand of Jesus touched you and now and now and now yeah I'm no longer the same ain't God alright ain't God alright ain't God alright is there anybody in Mount Vernon today that can say I feel like celebrating because I got a feeling that everything gonna be alright I'm going to my seat but if you would reach out and grab a neighbor by the hand and hold that hand hold that hand don't turn it loose hold it tight tell them these words neighbor We've had our share of ups and downs. We've been through storm. We've been through rain. But the same God that brought us from way back yonder, he will, he will, he will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, yeah. He will, he will, he will, he will, he will. How do you know he will? Somebody testify. The reason why I know that he will is because I tried him. Where y'all at in here that can testify? I tried him. He's all right. I tried him. He's a way maker. Your assignment. has not changed. You can't stop now. You can't quit now. The same worship you had when you started. You gotta have that same worship and then some to take us on. Because I'm gonna let you on a little secret and somebody knows I'm, I'm telling the truth. With every new level, you may as well expect a new devil. And I'm going to go ahead and drop some science on some folk who still are in this fantasy world of thinking that the devil is in a pitchfork with a red suit and a tail. No, y'all, the devil wears Prada now. Y'all ain't talking to me. The devil will put on Stacey Adams, put on a three-piece suit, sit up in here with a hat cocked to the side of their head, acting like they've arrived. Uh, when the truth be told, if he hadn't been there, uh, you wouldn't have made it anyhow. Your assignment has not changed. I must be about my father's business. Which says this to us, beloved, we got work to do. We got work to do. Don't get so comfortable. Don't, 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 don't get so satisfied that you don't realize that while you sit and satisfied, the devil is creeping in your house. And one thing you must realize, beloved, the devil is just like a rat. The devil's just like a rat, y'all. All he need. Now, 
That's all. That's all. He don't need no big blow up. He don't need a church conference. He don't need a deacon's board meeting. All he need is a phone call. Ooh, y'all ain't saying nothing. In this age of modern technology, all he needs is a text message, an email, an instant message on Facebook, and a wreak havoc. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But even <laughs> in Mount Vernon, St. James, Mount Moriah, other churches here, what is needed is a few dedicated, committed folk who can say, uh-uh, we ain't going out like that. We're not going to have that foolishness in our church. And you're not going to come up in here and raise no uh-huh in our church. If you're not going to lift up the name of Jesus, there's the door. Come on, somebody. Well, I guess I better go back to Rocky Mount now. God bless you. Happy anniversary, Mount Vernon. Well, beloved, I pray that you have been blessed. I pray you've been inspired. I pray you've been empowered by the word that you have heard. So much so that you will want to get up on tomorrow morning and make your way out to the house of worship to give the Lord's name the praise that he so richly deserves. In thinking about where you will worship, consider joining us right here at the St. James Missionary Baptist Church. St. James Church is located 527 East Thomas Street, just off of Raleigh Boulevard in the city of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Each Sunday morning, we have Sunday school at 945. Our morning worship service begins at 11 o'clock a.m. Join us on Tuesday evenings at 6.30 for our Tuesday night Bible study. Or perhaps you may join us on Thursday mornings for our Thursday midday Bible study that begins at 11.30 a.m. If this service has been a blessing to you, I'm pleased to let you know that our media outreach ministry stands ready and available to help you secure your copy of today's service on audio CD or DVD. All you'll have to do is call our church administrative office at 252-442 2318 and be sure to request the number that is listed on the screen. Someone will help you secure your order and will give you further information of how you can obtain a copy of this service for your continued enlightenment, enjoyment, and inspiration. As always, I want to say thanks so much for taking this Saturday morning to tune in to the Great Awakenings broadcast. I pray that these last 30 minutes have been a blessing to you. On behalf of myself and the St. James Church family, we look forward to seeing you real soon at the Place of Great Awakenings. Until our next broadcast, I'm Pastor James T. Worthy saying, may the blessings of the Lord be with you now and always. God bless.